The most common question I get from family members, friends, and viewers of this channel are, why doesn't my vehicle start? This includes cars and motorcycles. Well, if the vehicle was running well before this instance, nine times out of 10, it has something to do with the battery, the alternator, or the starter. So with that known, I lead them through a triage of questions to kind of hone in on what the actual problem is. And of those nine times out of 10, it's usually the battery, but sometimes it's the alternator or starter. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to locate the issue quickly and accurately? Well, this video, we're gonna do exactly that. Let's go check out what I have over on the bench. And what I've got right here is a mechanism that will tell you just that, which part of your charging or starting system is no longer good. Now, this tool is made by the company Launch, but a representative from King Bolin, who is the parent company that makes the Launch line of diagnostic scanner tools, reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to try this? And I said, I would give it a shot. And the reason for that is because I get so many questions about this particular kind of issue. And every time I've needed to diagnose it myself, I've had to utilize tools that are not as good. The tools that I've used in the past are all independent modules like this, such as a battery load tester and a multimeter to try and get the same result as a tool that can tell you it's automatically on the fly without any real knowledge of how it works behind the scenes. So I was very excited to try this tool out because it's something I'm going to use all the time, not just for cars, but for motorcycles as well. So I've already unboxed this thing. And as you can see, the main component is an Android looking tablet like this. And it's real easy to use. You just turn it on with a power button on the side. And when you first turn it on, you do need to hook it up to your Wi-Fi and then install a bunch of software because um, it doesn't come preloaded with the latest versions that you need to use. So you just go to upgrade and you can download all the latest software packages. Pretty simple to use, not gonna go through any of that. Inside of the box, we've got some user manuals that are really helpful for setting this up the first time. We've got a charging cord. And then we have the alligator clips that mount to the tool to test the battery. And then we also have a OBD2 connector because this tool is not just a battery system tester or a charging system tester. It is also a diagnostic tool that you can use on any car that has an OBD2 port. So it definitely is a multi-tool that is very useful. So the thing that I really wanna cover in this is obviously the starting charging system and battery test, which is inside of this menu right here. But the first thing I need to do is get this hooked up to the battery. And we're gonna do this on our Project Audi 5000, Project Unintended Spending. Now I'm hoping that these tests go well and we don't find out we need to replace more parts, but this car of course is called Project Unintended Spending, so don't be surprised if there are more issues lying within. Now what we're going to do with this tool is run a full charging system test. And what that means is you hook the tool up right up to your battery terminals and it's going to test the battery health, the charging system health, and the starting system health. Kill three birds with one stone. So again, all we did was connect these alligator clips directly to the module there. I cleaned up the terminals here with some sandpaper just so we make sure we have a good connection. You just hook the alligator clips right up to the battery terminals. Now this Audi is very convenient in the fact that it, the battery's in the interior. So I can hold the tool while I'm running all of the tests, which do require you to start the car and run it at a certain RPM. Now, if you don't have a battery as conveniently located, such as it's in the trunk or it's in the engine bay, it's a good idea to have a helper here to tell you when to initiate certain commands that show up on this device. See what I mean? Let's go ahead and get started. Now to get started, we'll hit this BTS menu button and we're gonna do the battery health test. And when you do this, it actually takes you to all of the series of tests you will want to run. So it first does this resetting series right here. We'll just wait for that to complete. All right, this is just making sure that the car is currently off. You say yes, go to next. And this is telling you the battery's current voltage and it's warning you that it's if it's basically 13 volts or greater, you might have issues, but we have no problems here. Then you select your battery type so you can run this on a normal acid style battery like is in this car. So I'm gonna select common battery, but AGM and gel batteries and EFB batteries are also supported. So that's pretty neat. 
Then it asks you to determine which battery standard. Now this one I'm not super familiar with. However, I am familiar with SAE or American Society of Mechanical Engineers. So I'm just going to use that as my battery testing standard. Then it wants you to enter the cold cranking amps of the battery. And this is listed on your battery. On this particular one, it's listed as 615 cold cranking amps. So I'm going to enter that in because it needs a benchmark to start from. And right now it's doing the battery test. And it tells me that the battery voltage is 12.33 volts and that it measured 595 cold cranking amps measures internal resistance and gives you a general status of good condition. Now, if your battery was in bad condition, it would say, probably please replace. You see these little pie charts at the top that tell you, you know, you probably need to replace your battery. It'd show red instead of I'm seeing green here. So we're gonna go on to the next test now that we've seen that our battery is good. So it's saying, make sure the engine's off. We'll hit next. Now it's telling me to start the engine. So it just did the starter health, and it's telling me that the starting voltage is normal and within specs. So I've just proven that my starter motor is working all right as well. So now let's move on to the next test. So it's saying make sure the engine is started, which it's on right now. We'll do next. And now it's doing the charging system test, or the alternator test. Okay, now it's telling me to raise the engine idle up to 2500 RPM and then click next. So here we go. That's 2500 RPM. Click next. It's telling me to turn the engine off. Oh, well, that's not great. <laughs> this test says that on load voltage is 13.14 volts and no load voltage is 13.17 volts. And that the charging voltage is too low. <laughs> well, I'm glad I ran this test. I'm glad I have this little reader because it has told me that my alternator is in fact about to crap out. That's not good, and in fact, that is one of the biggest reasons of why you'd want a reader like this, is because the alternator doesn't give you any symptoms or signs until it is too late, such as your car won't start or your car will just die while you're driving around. If I were to take a long trip in this car, get out of town, and I just would become stranded because my alternator no longer is charging the battery and the car dies, then I'd be in deep trouble. But now I can replace the alternator preventatively because I just learned that it's undercharging the system. That is really great information to know, especially on an old car like this. Now a cool function of this tool is that you can generate a report that gives you all of the system readings that you got while running these tests. So that's pretty cool. It saves it to the device so you can refer back later. You can also send it to yourself through email. So that's pretty cool as well. All right, so that is the <laughs> that is the system report for this particular car. I'm glad I ran it because I now need to do more work to this car. And now the car is fulfilling its name of unintended spending once again. So now I'll be on the hunt for a new alternator. Let's go run this test on one of the motorcycles I have just to see how it works for those. Next up, we've got this 2005 Honda CBR1000RR Repsol Edition. Now, Hondas are terrible about charging systems. The voltage regulator rectifier often dies and it'll leave you stranded. So it's always a good idea to test your charging system before you take your bike out for any meaningful distance. That or just upgrade it to a better voltage regulator. So let's go back into that battery health test. It's telling us the current battery voltage is 12.54. This is a common battery, aka a lead acid battery. So we'll hit next. And we'll stay on the SAE scale. 
And the cold cranking amps of this battery is much lower because it's a smaller one. It's 190 cold cranking amps. All right, so that is saying that this is in very good condition. In fact, it measured this as 335 cold cranking amps. So now let's do the next test. Now it's telling you to start the engine, so we'll do that. That is saying that the starter is in great condition. So now we'll go to the next test. Start the engine back up. Right, and that test has told us that the charging system is normal. So that's a good report for this bike. Well, it's pretty clear to see the advantages for testing your starting and a charging system health, as well as the battery system health on both cars and motorcycles. But there is one more feature this thing has up its sleeve, and that is the onboard diagnostics capabilities for OED2 cars which I have one sitting out there, my BMW F10, the 535i. So let's hook it up to that and see what sort of onboard diagnostics this is capable of. Okay, so I've hooked this tool up to the OBD2 port on the BMW. Now we're just going to turn the car on, not engine start, just car on. And we can go into OBD2. It's scanning all the systems. You can read live data, that's pretty nice. So reading live data streams of modern cars like this is actually really helpful in diagnosing any issues. For example, this has throttle by wire. So if you were having some issues with, you know, it seemed like the throttle pedal wasn't linear or wasn't responding well, then you could go here to accelerator pedal position. You see, as I push the pedal down, see those percentages changing so that potentiometer or whatever what's in that throttle pedal you see that that's actually working now I'm not sure what the correct percentages should be but at least you can see that there's an output when you move the throttle pedal so that's pretty cool and that's the value of having one of these diagnostic scanners like this that have like an actual tablet screen you can see all of these different inputs on the vehicle and help you narrow down a more complex issue that you might be experiencing fuel system pressures air intake temperatures really all of the things you'd expect from a modern obd2 car fuel trims vehicle speed sensor so lots of things you can get live data back just drive the car around and you can see how all the components are functioning let's see diagnosis now it looks like you can automatically search for the vehicle we'll see how that works and it found the car it knows it's an F10 535i it knows the build date and the engine that's in it and the VIN number and it knows the current mileage, which is pretty cool. So we've got a few fault codes coming through. One for the engine control module. Intelligent battery sensor. Now the important thing to note here is I'm not getting any check engine lights or any sort of failure lights on the dashboard so I'm guessing these are things that just kind of pop up as flukes something about electronic power steering open circuit I'm wondering if this all has to do with maybe some sort of fluke with the battery now I've never replaced the battery on this car so I should probably run the battery test on this particular vehicle which I'll do eventually the only difficulty is it's in the trunk so I it's not as easy to do but let's go ahead and clear the codes here you can also do a report on that so if you wanted to get a printout of all the codes that have been logged you can also do that and 
now there are no fault codes. So we'll just have to see if anything returns. But that's the beauty of having your own tool like this. If it ever does crop back up, you can go back in here and really start digging into what might actually be wrong. I have a feeling that all of these are just triggered by possibly a battery that's getting a little bit old and likely needs to be replaced. That's very typical of BMWs and really any modern car that uh, all the electronics are very temperamental once the voltage kind of drops below a certain threshold. Let's see what this reset menu has. Oh, look, you've got an oil reset function, ABS bleeding, tire pressure monitoring reset, throttle relearn, battery reset, and brake reset. So there's various custom service functions that this um, has shortcuts to. So that'd be very helpful for this car, for example. You change the oil, you can just go in and hit the oil reset. So there we have it, a true master of all multi-tool that will help you with diagnosing charging and running systems as well as all of your car's onboard diagnostics. It does it all and I have to say this thing is a sweet tool to have in your tool belt. If you do any sort of DIY maintenance or take care of friends and family's vehicles, this will answer a lot of questions right off the bat. Instead of having to invest in a bunch of other independent tools that get you to the same conclusion. You can just buy it once and be done for good. So if you're interested in picking up this diagnostic tool and scanner, be sure to check the link in the description below where you can find it for sale. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all again in the next video.